Hi, this is Tim of the 1916 Company. Welcome and thanks for logging on. If you love this watch, email us tmasso at the 1916company.com. It's in the description below. Your purchase and pricing email question line for buying this or any watch you see on any of our platforms. Reach out to us for pricing at tmasso at the 1916company.com. Today, we are discussing the follow-up to the breakthrough and landmark 2011 Legacy Machine by MBNF. This is the Legacy Machine number two, and it forges further into the thought exercise that Max first created with the Legacy Machine. Namely, what would an MBNF wristwatch look like if it were created in the late 19th century in sort of a steampunk sense? Of course, that was the pocket watch era, so the result is a wristwatch that incorporates a lot of pocket watch tropes. And this watch is a sort of tribute to the legacy of three great watchmakers and clockmakers, Abraham Louis Breguet, Ferdinand Bertou, and Antide Jean Vier. So what we have here is actually a double escapement with a differential to average them together and a single time display. So a tribute to the gods, if you will. Now the watch is large. 44 millimeters in white gold. You can see it's made almost as much of sapphire as it is of white gold. In terms of lug-to-lug -lug dimensions right here, we have 50.1, which is the most reasonable dimension here. It is quite thick, though, at 19.8 millimeters thick. Between the lugs, a broad 24 millimeters. So on my wrist, which is 16 centimeters in circumference, it's a big watch, but big is the style. That said, I probably wouldn't wear this on a wrist much larger than mine. Let me zoom out as much as I can. You can see that the watch does fit me, and I would wear this happily. But if you have a smaller wrist, you're going to have some issues with the lugs probably encroaching on the edge. Let's take a look down the barrel so you can sort of decide for yourself right here if you're borderline. The watch probably won't fit underneath most dress cuffs, but but because it is so sloped, it might actually fit underneath the jacket sleeve. Regardless, though, this is a watch that is geared towards flamboyance. It's not something to disappear under a sleeve. And then, of course, you can see the over-the-top shot right there. The strap, high grade, no complaints. It is equal to the occasion. You can see that the lugs are drilled fairly close to the case, so a curved spring bar is used so that there's no impediment to the motion. It also brings the pivot points further in to mitigate fit issues on borderline sized wrists. Now you can see it is large rectangular scale, symmetrical scale alligator leather, always a sign that a high grade cut of the animal was used. We have a folded edge, a little bit of bolstering or stuffing to add some volume, semi-gloss finish on the bottom. You can see Camille Fournay which is a high-end French strap maker that's also the OEM provider to a lot of high-end Swiss brands, and that it has a wonderfully buttery calfskin on the bottom. Brand new strap, no crimping, no gouging. And then you can see here, we have a matching white gold satinated and polished pin buckle. The case is principally of satin finish, though you can see there are some polished bevels on the lugs as well as a polished outer lip to the bezel. The lugs are stepped out rather dramatically to emphasize the circular cylinder of the central case to remind you that this is a wristwatch that is envisioned as a thought experiment to have existed in the pocket watch era. So we have elements of both wrist and pocket watch design coinciding here. There's a little bit of an overlapping lip of the bezel beyond the case. And then you can see that it has a slight concave inward profile. We have a crown with an offset orientation with the MBNF double-edged battle axe motif right there. Winding, it's a real pleasure, by the way, due to the resistance of the massive mainspring and the high quality of the click detent. On the dial side, under this enormously vaulted sapphire, we have a lot going on. So we have a lacquered display for the time. That's what's going on there. We have two independent balances. Each one features a dual anchored balance bridge and a free sprung architecture for durability. And in the case of the free sprung architecture, precision of adjustment. These are large balances, 11 millimeters in diameter, far larger than on a conventional watch. You can also see that they have enormously extended balance staffs with roller tables all the way at the bottom adjacent to the dial. You can see each one has a separate bridge for the escapement underneath and an overcoil hairspring. So in pretty much any position, overcoils with a highly centered mass, more so than a flat hairspring, they keep consistent time. So that's the first step in creating a very precise 
positionally agnostic timekeeper. The second is that we have a planetary differential at the center. Now, you know from a car that has an open differential at the rear that when you have a differential, power's coming in from the drive shaft, it will ensure the same amount of force is applied to both sides. But when you operate it in reverse, where you have the two inputs into the differential and then a single output to the hands, the differential will average the two different oscillators. So the idea here is that they are going to beat in opposition to each other. And notice the orientation of the hairspring. See how it's a little bit offset? It's equal and opposite. So in different orientations, they're going to have different deviation. One is more likely to gain, and the other, by an equal and opposite margin, should lose time. So averaging them through the planetary differential ensures what should be just about perfect timekeeping at the display level. Now, you'll notice the finish is exceptional. We have this lovely radial snailing on the anthracite dial base. We have engraving of leg legacy machine, and then you can see this hand engraving of exceptional quality, black lacquered on the case back, with the names of two of the most important friends. Remember, M, B, and F is Max, Booser, and Friends. Jean-Francois Mojon, once a complication specialist at IWC, runs Chronode, one of the foremost complication and movement developers in Switzerland. And Kerry Voudelainen, who is probably better known than Jean-Francois, but I would say both of these guys at the top of their game on an equal footing. Voodelin and probably best known for finishing. Mohan, or Mojon, I should say, best known for engineering. So this is kind of the best of both. So Voodelainen had strong feelings about the architecture of the bridge, the proportion of the pieces, their relative positioning, finishing standards to be applied, and of course, Jean-Francois with the actual engineering. So we've got two different balances, beating at 18,000 vibrations per hour. You could see that the finishing is quite good, even on the dial side. Note that inside of the wheel, on top the differential, we do have polishing within the inner circumference of the wheel, as well as the spokes interfaces. That's a lovely level of attention to detail, often skipped. Satination across the bridge for it. You can see we have satination as well as beveling on the balance bridges. All screw heads black polished with chamfered slots and circumference. The beveling within the bridge also excellent, as well as beveling within the countersinks for the jewels. Turn it all over. This is where things get baroque. Taking a look at the wheels, you could see inside there's a gloss and a gleam and sharp interior angles where beveling has been applied to the inside of the wheels. This is often overlooked even on Geneva Hallmark movements. So to see it here, in profusion is impressive, remember, because each wheel has five spokes and two sides, you wind up with 40 of these interior angles. Now you can see the bridges are beveled with hand beveling, real hand laid bevels, a mile wide, mirrored, rounded, and deeply drawn. You can also see that the bridges are made deeper to allow the bevels to be drawn deeper. We have abrasive wheel Cote de Genève, hell no stamping here. This is all done by conventional abrasive striping, and you can see that the, the stripes have a sharp darkness gradient from one side to another. We also have enormous countersinks for both jewels and screws, and you can see that the jewels are set in golden chaton, like an old pocket watch. Solarization on both crown and ratchet wheel. Uh, they're really gilding the lily here. We have a combination of snailing and engine turning on the base plate and satination on the faces of the wheels. All of this 30 meters water resistant. So dress watch water resistant, splash and rain only. Manual wind, 45 hour power reserve, a wonderful thought exercise and a triumph in the flesh, or I should say in the metal. From one of the coolest brands run by one of the coolest dudes, Max Booser and Friends, he names every person right down to the buckle and strap maker involved in making each watch. Not only is Max a really good guy in a fun interview, but he is generous with credit. If you like that, reach out to Team Also at the 1916 Company for purchase and pricing details.